Oh, hey, you didn't see me there. <laughs> but you're going to be glad you came by today. I've got a couple really cool things to show you. And it's going to start with this particular thing right here. This is my old Macintosh Plus. Bought this way back in 1986. It's been a workhorse really ever since then. Yes, it still does work. Uh, sometimes it takes about a minute to boot up. What it's doing right now is doing its RAM test. Four megabytes of RAM, I might add. Uh, this particular machine has a 10 megabyte hard drive, external SCSI hard drive. That's SCSI, small computer serial interface. Uh, those old SCSI drives are notoriously loud. So if you're hearing kind of a whining noise, you're probably hearing this drive underneath the audio. Uh, it should boot. There it goes. Uh, this machine has been really uh, in use until somewhat recently. It was still in my, it's still being used in my business until just not too long back. We were using it for scheduling and for keeping track of employee hours and a bunch of other stuff like that. Then we finally replaced it with some other machines that I'm going to show you that's going to lead us to the really cool thing that I'm going to show you here in just a second. The reason we retired this old guy is because we needed to do some stuff that this really wasn't capable of. Uh, I'd like to use it kind of as a point of sale system, so we needed to be able to run cards through it. Um, and it needed to be on the internet and some other stuff that was just really that was going to be beyond this machine's capability. So um, I'm going to show you what we replaced this with, which is going to lead us to the thing that I really want to show you right after this. So this is one of my point of sale machines. Uh, it is basically a Macintosh case with an iPad stuck in it. Uh, maybe someday I'll do a video kind of showing you how I built this thing. Wonder what that video would look like. All right, so what I did see is I took this old Macintosh case and I cut a hole in it and I stuck an iPad in it. Nah, maybe some of the time. Customers will notice the machines all the time and that's really the reason that they're there. They frequently seem to think that it's an actual piece of 80s technology that's been unmodified, you know, in spite of the fact that the keyboard isn't attached to it and there's nothing plugged into anything anywhere. And people will often misidentify what the machine actually is. They won't see it as a Macintosh. They'll think that it's a Commodore or an Apple II. Uh, you know, at least they're getting the error right. And that's really just all part of the fun, isn't it? But the ones that actually get to me are the ones that will notice us operating the machines. And then they'll smugly point at it and go, aha, you didn't have touchscreens back in the 80s, did you? Well, Mr. Smart Guy, I did have a touchscreen back then, and I could use it to send messages. It had a contact list on it. It had a calendar on it. It had time management on it. And even better, it was on my phone. This is the AT&T 510A personal terminal, and I can safely say that you've probably never seen anything like it. The AT&T personal terminal 510A. This is a real phone. It actually has a touch screen on it. Uh, what we're looking at right now is a directory. Um, and let's try to call a number. Let's, uh, let's call the Ghostbusters. And I'll turn that back off with the speakerphone off. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but the screen has got kind of a, really kind of a gel, kind of a touchy, squishy feel to it. Uh, and really what's happening is that there's a layer of, again, some sort of a gel, and then there's sort of a capacitance layer apparently in there, and then the monitor itself. Uh, so it doesn't feel like, you know, an iPhone or an Android phone. It doesn't have a hard surface in it. It actually gives, as you touch it, it's a pretty unique kind of feel. This machine also has some other functions to it. Of course, there's your basic calculator that, you know, you'd want to have on pretty much anything. It also has a time manager in it which lets you take a ridiculous amount of time to enter things that would probably be much easier to scratch out onto a piece of paper. And it'll tell you how long it's taking you to do things and warn you when things are going to happen, stuff like that. Uh, not really terribly useful, but boy, back in the day, it was a, it was a cool thing to have, um, or at least to show off with. I had mentioned that this machine is also a communications device. Uh, we can come in here and uh, look at the modem itself. It does have a 1200 baud modem built into it. And you could have used that to connect with various things like a bulletin board and various online services, none of which I can find anymore. I couldn't find a single phone number of anybody around here, even remotely local to me or really anywhere else 
that's still running a dial-up bulletin board that I could have I could have called. I could have showed you what this thing was like back in the day when you had to watch text slowly scroll across the screen. This machine was really intended for an executive, so it would do things like track the amount of time you spent on the phone with various people. Uh, you had different um, directories you could load up to, for different groups of people and things like that. You could tie two people together in a phone call because it did have two lines that came in. Uh, it would also connect to a printer. You could, ex you could connect an external keyboard to it, although there is an internal keyboard built into it. Uh, let's see if I can get to that. We can go menu, uh, preferences set up. Um, Let's see if I can find something that'll let me do a keyboard. Oh, there's a keyboard right there. As you can see there's a, you know, a basic keyboard in there. You're not going to touch type on it, that's for sure. But it is there. So we can do some really quick math here to demonstrate how much faster communication speeds are nowadays uh, as opposed to the way that they were back in the 80s. Uh, this machine has a 1200 baud modem in it. That's uh, 1200 baud. Now baud is a term that isn't really used anymore much. Uh, uh, one baud is really one packet of communications, uh, and it can vary depending on certain factors. In this particular case, uh, we're talking an 8-bit baud, which is, in the case of this particular machine, the same thing as 9,600 bits per second. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and shorthand that to 9.6 kilobits per second. And you could be watching this video at a speed upwards of 100 megabits per second. Uh, there are, it's not uncommon to see houses anymore with speeds of that, of internet connections at that speed. Uh, and if we solve that for X, we can figure out how many baud you'd be communicating with if you were at that speed in your house. Uh, 100 megabits per second is the same thing as 100,000 kilobits per second. And so real quickly, we can just, uh, we can create a, uh, an equation to solve this. So we take 1200, we times that by 100,000 kilobits per second, divide that entire thing by 9.6 kilobits per second. <laughs> Cannot write. Uh, and that's going to be baud. And in this particular case, uh, that will work out to 12,500,000 baud uh and, and uh, I, obviously i'd done this math beforehand it's 0. 0.0096 percent as fast as you're used to communicating right now 1200 baud is so yeah so when we were downloading pictures and movies we tended to have to wait for a while so one thing i thought that was uh kind of interesting about this um might have a look here real quick if i go to the preferences uh the date it thinks that it's uh, January 20th, 1984, 11.30 a.m. That's just four days before the Macintosh was released. And that was 37 years ago. Uh, wow, that it really was 37 years ago. It, uh, wow, that's, you stop to think about it, that, I mean, that was a long time ago. I, th 37 years, that's. But you know what? It is 37 years ago, but the 80s were better. It was a better time. The year 1984 was the best year ever. There was so much stuff we could do. We had these things called movie theaters where we actually went to to go see a movie. And you could go to one of the big movie theaters which would have three whole cinemas in it. And in that you could walk in and you could watch The Terminator. And if you didn't like that, you could walk back out and you could go, go back in and watch Ghostbusters. If you didn't like that, you could go back in and watch Spinal Tap. Go across the street to the other Cinema 3. Watch Gremlins. You don't want to like Gremlins? Watch Buckaroo Banzai. You don't want Buckaroo Banzai? Go watch The Last Starfighter. We're talking about a year that was so big. That, that's, that's the top 50. A movie like Firestarter didn't even make it into the top 50. Firestarter was number 64. Everything. You, wanted, you could just go into a movie theater and watch something epic. And we had these things called radio stations, and you can just listen to music for free. 
All you had to do is just turn it on. And you, in, in one hour, you could hear wind doves cry. You could hear footloose. You could hear jump. You could hear girls just want to have fun. Not in red balloons. Sunglasses at night. Come on, feel the noise. You could listen to Ledge. We still had David Bowie. We still had Prince. You could turn on the TV and watch the A-Team. That was near the Macintosh came out. If you didn't like a Macintosh, you could go buy an original IBM PC. I'm not talking about a PC compatible. I'm talking about an IBM PC. The future was so bright that we had to wear shades. And who got revenge in 1984? Nerds! But you want to know what I really miss about the 80s? I had hair. See you next time.